Welcome to the latest equipment review video. In front of you are three pieces of equipment. On the left, you have an Agilent Precision LCR meter that was purchased somewhere around 2005 for my graduate thesis work. In the middle is our brand new uh, Agilent or Keysight, a six and a half digit precision multimeter. And on the right, is the first Siglent I ever purchased. It is a five and a half digit multimeter. So in this video we're going to actually evaluate the new Keysight meter and I'll explain why we need these precision meters going forward in, in a later part of this video. But right now we're going to compare to see how all these read using the same test. So we're going to see how well the the older Keysight and Siglent equipment has held up their cow in the years and compare them against the brand new key site and it's got the calibration certificate mounted on the back and look we still have the calibration certificate mounted to the back of the precision LCR meter but of course that came with it 15 years ago so what we're going to do now is see how well the the precision LCR meter and the siglent has held up over the years with our new reference our key site is going to be the reference going forward for all the things we need to do this precision multimeter has been in my garage pretty much for the last three years and it's gone through winters and summers and the winters sometimes get down to minus 20 and when I'm out there I'm some, working in the in the garage sometimes I use a kerosene heater and if those of my patreon folks have seen my video I show that a lot of my equipment in the gar garage is rusting to heck because of the moisture vapor thrown off by the kerosene heater I use when I'm using the garage in the winter. And so this poor little meter has gone through trauma like you wouldn't believe in the past three years. And we're going to show you it's going to be pretty damn good when we actually attach it to the precision resistor that we're going to compare everything with. So that's what we got coming forward. You don't want to miss this. And we're going to set up right now to do the, the resistance checks right now. Okay, our first measurement is with the Precision 10 kilo ohm resistor. The precision of this resistor is 0.05%. And it's pre presently on the Precision LCR meter, which was just gone through a short compensation and an open compensation. All right, let's just say it's 10.000006 kilo ohms. Okay, so what did we have? Back in three years ago, three years ago, the Agilent read 10.000007. So that was back at 18 November of 2017. Okay, and it's measuring 10.000056. Okay, so let's just say 10.00005 is the average reading that we're seeing. So let me write that down for 2 October 10 0 0 0 point zero 0.05 okay so that's what it measured three years ago and that's what it's measuring today incredible absolutely incredible and that was 18 November 2017. This is uh, 2nd October 2020. See, the, see, my friends, that's why people pay the money for Agilent. I mean, that's pretty much <laughs> an incredibly accurate, precise reading. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the 100 ohm resistor on. Back in 18 November, read 9.9983 ohms on the Agilent. So let's see what we get now. Okay, I gotta let the nine, whoops, let me zoom in, I can't see it from here. Nine, 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 four, three, oops, nine, 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 four, three, eight, looks like the average median reading. All right, let's just say 9999439 because it's bumbling around a little bit. So, let's 
Okay. Damn good. Damn good repeatability over the years. Oh, and on these charts, just so you know, this is the 0.5%. So it's got to be between this line and this line. That is where the tolerance of the resistor lies between these two lines. This is the exact value, the, the, the value marked on the resistor. And the Agilent back in uh, 2017 got 99.9983. And today we're getting 999.489 or 439, which is very, 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 very good. So, and again, that's why people buy Agilent. Let's go over to the. Okay, we have the 10 kilo ohm resistor on the Agilent, and it's reading 9.99978. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to write that down, and I'm going to use red for Keysight on our little sheet of paper here. Okay, so that's Keysight. It's pretty much on the line. Now we're going to switch over to the 100 ohm resistor. And the 100 ohm resistor on the Keysight is 9999.994. Ninety-nine nine four. Okay, let's just say, let's just say ninety-nine point nine nine three. Oh, it's changing. Let's make the aperture much longer so it takes a much more precise measurement. Wait for it. It's 99.991 five. Six, five, I'll say five. I don't know, there looks like a little bit of little bit of uncertainty in there. Okay, next we're gonna go to the Siglent. Okay, with the Siglent we have the 10k ohm resistor on, it's reading 9999995. Now back in Three years ago, it registered 999994, which is excellent. It's only off like in the least significant digit. And I'm going to use blue for Siglent, or green for Siglent. Now, one thing that, that I have to say is back in 18 November 2017, I had a mistake here because the Siglent read 9999.4. And I said, well, it's kind of out of spec. That's because the spec line down here, I had the spec as 99995, which was incorrect. So the Siglent was actually in way back then because I had the wrong number for the 0.05% error line. So in other words, the values have to be between this line. And the Siglent is reading just about what it read before. And I'm going to use green point, oops, the thing's shorted on me here, hold on. So point, it's 9.99996 kilo ohms. I'm going to say 5. Okay, so the Siglent is doing fantastic. This is what it read three years ago. This is what it's reading now. That's performance you can take to the freaking bank. It's great. Um, I can't argue with that. And again, this Siglent has been sitting in my base, in my garage, going through winters and summers, and uh, with highly corrosive vapors from a kerosene heater in some of the winters, and it's reading the same values that it read three years ago, pretty much. I mean, down to you know, one, one tick of the least significant digit. That's fantastic. For what I paid for it, that's fantastic. All right, let's put the 100 ohm resistor on. There it goes. Okay, 99.9991 ohms. 
again. Okay, so back in three years ago, I read 99.992. Today it's reading 99.991. That is fantastic. I mean, that's really good. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> oh, now it's three. Now it's two. So it's getting back to the same number. It was re so it's reading the virtually the same number. Through going through all that torture. I'm extremely impressed with Siglent. Okay, that is the beauty of this precision equipment. And, and, and Siglent, for the price, is just really... It's just knocking things out of the barn, considering that this little poor little guy has gone through a lot of trauma and has been in an environment that I would not really, you know, these key sites are going to be kept in a in a very climate controlled, humidity controlled area because they're going to be my the the reason for these guys, especially this guy, is going to be calibrating all of our other equipment. In other words, for the Paradox 3, we're developing a, a telemetry package to measure the voltages of the Paradox 3. And I need to be able to calibrate those telemetry measurements alongside a known good calibration, a known good uh, reference. And that's what this guy is going to serve. But because, you know, this guy is doing good and we verified this guy against this guy, this guy is now, can also be used as a device to to calibrate our references because it's showing it's doing just as good as this guy um, and so it's valid it's making valid measurements so that's where we are right now with this and uh, we're going to do the next measurement of these guys which is uh, is going to be the uh, the precision voltage measurements that's going to I need to set that up so I'll uh, see you in a second all right in this next segment we're going to measure the uh, DC voltage measurement this is my precision reference, and you can see the voltage it's plugged into is 4.0962 volts. And the Agilent shows 4.06923, and the Siglent also shows 4.0962, which seems to bounce to one every now and again. And now we're going to plug it into the next, which is 0.76603. Now, 0.76590. So the meters are showing the same answer, but the value I have written on here might be wrong. I think, if I remember from the last video, I did have non-confidence that I did not compute that correctly. 7659.04. So I'm going to write that down here. 0.76590. Five nine oh four is what the Agilent gives. Okay, and I'm going to plug it into the last one here, which says thirty three point three oh four millivolts. And the Agilent is showing thirty three point three. 111 and the Siglent is pretty much in the ballpark. So they agree to within, I can show both of them at the same time, to about one or two millivolts. I'm sorry, one or two microvolts, which is pretty damn good, pretty damn decent. But we're going to go right now because we know this guy just came from the factory. That's going to be the reading we're going to write down. Uh, that's 33. All right, so all of the, and the meters are showing excellent results with what it should be. Um, you know, the Siglent for being, as I said, tortured in my garage for about the last three years is, is responding remarkably well. The next test we're going to do is we're going to do the frequency test. Frequency, 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 shift, frequency. And this is frequency here. Okay, let's see if I can get both of them closer together so we can see them both at the same time. I'm hooking this up to the Tektronics function generator. And the function generator is set to 10 kilohertz. 
and lo and behold, both meters are reading the same. So that's really, really, really good. Now here's the interesting part. I've done this before and it turns out that the Agilent here can only go up to about 800 kilohertz. So let's get up there. Okay, now when I go to the next one, 900 kilohertz, the Agilent goes cuckoo. So the Agilent's limit, I think, was 830 kilohertz. Okay, the Siglent is able to go all the way up to, I think I got it up to 3.2 megahertz. Which, hey, you know, that's a, that's a feather in Siglent's cap, as far as I'm concerned. So I think I got it to 3.2. And the next moment, it should go nuts. No, 3.3, 3.4. Okay, so you go up to 3.4 megahertz. All right, so that that's that's really you know that's really good. That's like Siglent is like for the amount of money that the Siglent costs. In my opinion, it's just as good as the Keysight. But of course, we're doing the Keysight because the measurements we take going forward, we need to be able to have a meter that we know at least in the next year is going to be traceable back to NIST as far as its results so we can transfer this precision to the other instruments so now we know this guy is in good shape because he's getting the right results so this guy is in Cal right now. But I like the fact that he can go up to 3.5 megahertz uh, for his frequency counter that's really really good I don't know why the Agilent can't go up there um, but in any event so that ends the review of the Keysight slash Siglent uh, multimeters. And again, Siglent offers a six and a half digit. I only have the five and a half digit because this is the first Siglent I bought. And I wanted to buy something small that I could get a good feeling for Siglent with. And so far, every piece of equipment I've purchased from Siglent has worked as I would expect. I mean, for the price, it's working as good as the higher end Tektronics and Agilent stuff. Okay, so even their scopes. Their scopes, and there's, we do have reviews of scopes for those who haven't seen them. The Siglent scopes are performing uh, uh, very well for the amount of, amount of money they cost relative to either the Tektronics or Keysight stuff. So anyway, thank you for watching along and I, I thank my Patreon members. Um, again, we're purchasing all this equipment because I believe an interregnum is coming. And strangely enough, the company I work for they have pallets full of Keysight and Road Schwartz and National Instrument stuff in the hallways. They're buying equipment like crazy. So I'm not the only one who realizes that hard times are going to be coming ahead. Anyway, thanks to everybody. Thanks for listening along. Thank you.